Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. We've got another new project to work on. It's actually a, uh, a new Enterprise SSD. First one we've seen in a little while. The flow's kind of slowed down, I think, as vendors try to figure out what they want to release, most of it being around PCIe Gen 4, where most of the excitement is. But that's also excitement that doesn't necessarily translate into sales because of uh, the servers we have that can support PCIe Gen 4, at least throughout the whole server, both in the front and the, the PCIe slots, there's very few. So we've got the Lenovo SR635, which is one, and that's about it. Uh, most of the current gen AMD servers uh, that would be the first to support PCIe Gen 4 only support it in the PCIe slots uh, in the back and not in the drive bays in the front. So it makes it a little bit harder for the enterprise SSD vendors to really want to go out and push PCIe Gen 4 when there's just not a lot of platforms to, to support it. Really, it looks like it's going to be still maybe this fall before Intel gets there. So we'll see how that plays out. Until then, uh, there's still some work to be done on existing technology. And there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to still use PCIe Gen 3, mostly because that's the install base, right? Uh, Every, pretty much every server the last couple of years supports it, so it's widely available and widely known. One other trick is that the edge card is something that was really popular for a long time, waned a little bit over the years, but is, uh, still adds a lot of value because uh, when we think about servers and their construction, while, like we just said, with PCIe Gen 4 being slow to adopt through the front bays, NVMe is the same problem where most of the bays in the fronts of servers are SATA SAS and not supporting NVMe at all. So with an edge card, you can still get a lot of great performance uh, from older servers and keep that uh, legacy equipment operating and operating really well. So what we've got is the Memblaze uh, PBlaze 5 N920 uh, series. And we've worked with PBlaze drives for many years. We've got the U.2 uh, PBlaze 4, this is a couple years old now, and then we've got a couple in there, uh, PBlaze 5 series that we've worked with prior. So the difference between this PBlaze 5 and this PBlaze 5 is mostly around NAND. This uses 64 layer NAND, and this guy, let's get to it, uses 96 layer NAND. So, we've got this nice little card here. So here we go, this is the new drive, this is the 926. So in the Memblaze family, what they normally do is they segment a couple different ways. They'll do a U.2 like these guys and then an edge card, so that's two. And then they'll do a higher endurance, a three drive write per day and a one drive write per day. So basically four different families that are split up. So that's what we have here. This is the 926 6.4 terabyte card uh, which will deliver really great performance in the edge card. So you're going to get about 5.9 uh, gigabytes a second throughput at the high end and should be close to like 950, maybe even a million IOPS when we, when we look at that. Uh, so again, a edge card will still give you really great performance even on legacy servers without having to go to PCIe Gen 4. Now Gen 4 will get you more, there's no doubt about that. But in the, in the balance of equipment of investing in new versus putting something like this to work in an older server, you know, that's going to be the trade-off. So Memblaze is banking for now that the current market of, of existing server base is where they want to focus. Now, they surely have a Gen 4 product on the roadmap. They'd be silly not to, right? Um, but uh, for now, we've got this. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put this in a server now and get some initial performance numbers just to see what that peak looks like and see if we can get close to that 5.9 uh, number. So we're going to do that now. I'll drop it in and we'll pull up the server console and show you what we're seeing. All right, so we've taken the Memblaze card and dropped it into one of our Dell EMC PowerEdge R740 XDs that we use to test enterprise SSDs. Uh, so a couple things to mention here. We've got the 6.4 terabyte card. That's the C926. That's the three drive write per day. So they're higher endurance spec in this family. The C920 uh, similar card would be 7.68 terabytes. So that, uh, that 1.2 roughly that you lose is the over provisioning that's required to get to that three drive write per day number. 
Um, in terms of performance, they spec out pretty much the same. They'll both have the same top end um, read uh, performance and throughput. The biggest difference is going to be on uh, on sustained random writes. So those real heavy write workloads is where the endurance drives really kick in in terms of being able to absorb and handle that. Uh, so we'll see a spec of 300,000 IOPS on this card compared to 150,000 on the uh, lower endurance card. So that's, in terms of performance, that's the one big difference uh, that, that you get. Otherwise, like I said, reads will be similar. So what we've done is, like I said, drop the card into one of our PowerEdge servers, and now we're just going to start a real basic VD bench profile against the card. So we're running unrestricted, looking for maximum throughput available from the card. And we do this just to make sure that our initial findings meet the uh, spec that's on the on the vendor's spec sheet. And so Memblaze quoted 5.9 gigabytes per second. We're running in megabytes per second. But right away, we can see on our 64k sequential uh, memblaze runs 128 but similar results here of uh, of you know we're getting a little bit over the uh, 5.9 spec and we do this just to shake out the card make sure that everything is uh, uh, working as it should at least initially because if we saw something else here if we saw 5,000 or 4,000 or some other number then we'd, we'd want to go back and, and diagnose the issue maybe it's firmware maybe there's a compatibility problem um, you know, maybe something else is, is broken in the system and we'd rather suss that out up front now by investing you know minutes not days of time in in uh, in figuring this out and you know staring at a console screen is probably not that exciting of a video but you know we do want to show this let you start to see the numbers that we see and once this test finishes this will run 30 intervals It'll kick down to 10% workload, then 20, and then scale the workload back up. Uh, again, we do that so that eventually we'll build our charts and, and show the scalability of the drive under stress and then uh, a little bit past the stress point to see how it behaves. Um, so what we're, we're seeing what we'd expect, and, uh, and that's, that's great. And we'll be uh, finishing working through the, the benchmarks over the next uh, you know, probably a week or two, and then uh, we'll have a review up on storageview.com. So come back and check that out. And until then, thanks for checking out the video. We appreciate your support.